It is always and forever about what the other person needs. What are they hearing? What are they saying? What are they saying with their bodies? What are they, what, what are they not saying, right? What are they listening to? Where are they in their moment? Then and only then, only after I put them first, can I have an effective conversation with them. Welcome to the Superhero Sidekick Leadership Coaching Podcast with Joel Smith and Joe Baker. We're here to help you develop your superpowers. This is the Superhero Sidekick Coaching Podcast. I'm Joel Smith. I'm Joe Baker. We're not here to be the superhero. We just want to be your sidekick and help you along in building your business, building your not-for-profit. Let's help you grow it fast and really scale. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and visit us at SuperheroSidekick.com. Welcome to the Superhero Sidekick Coaching Podcast. I am Joel Smith. Joining me is my regular co-host and founder of Superhero Sidekick coaching and that is joe baker how you doing joe hey doing good excited Great. to be here so you know some people might be wondering joe what is superhero sidekick where did that term come from and what does it mean yeah when i started coaching i just quickly realized that you know it wasn't about me it wasn't about me anymore being a leader uh it was about me helping uh these other organizations really grow and and scale and so i've uh, continually said it's not about uh us trying to be the superhero we just want to be your sidekick yeah, I love that. That's one of the first things that uh, attracted me to wanting to uh, do a podcast with Joe, too. It's just his uh, his uh, willingness to serve other people and his worldview and his, his faith. And, so, and I know that that all plays into what you do, Joe. We appreciate that. Our guest today has been helping others develop their superpowers for several years. Uh, Seneca Wah is the founder and director of uh, Your Clear Next Step. Your Clear Next Step is a training and coaching organization that helps individuals and organizations and churches have better work days so they can co-create better communities. I, I kind of stole your elevator pitch there, Seneca. <laughs> you so. did. You at a loss for words, Joel. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it is such a joy, Joel and Joe, to, to spend this time with you. Yeah. yeah, we're excited to have you. Yep. Well, I met Seneca. I met, I met her a couple years ago, and we've been working on some projects together. And uh, I want to tell you that Seneca is uh, the real deal. She's been a tremendous influence on me uh, as a mentor and just and, and an encourager as I've been, you know, getting my coaching business working. And so, uh, you know, thank you, thank you for that, Seneca. I really appreciate that. And anyway, I I just have a tremendous amount of respect for Seneca. We asked her to be on to talk about uh, uh, frontline leaders. And so Seneca has a series coming out in February. Uh, it's a supervisory series. And we're, we're going to just touch base a little bit on what that is. So Seneca, tell us about, so what, what exactly is a frontline leader? You bet. Great question, Joel. So there are lots of different leaders in the world and, and people who um, have specializ specializations and expertise in different leadership uh, skills and at different leadership levels. And you've got leaders and managers and leaders of leaders and directors. And really, um, my, my heart right now and, and this series in particular, the, the topic of the day is really on those frontline leaders. So the leaders who are directly accountable for the, the scheduling work, the assignment work, the the, the detailed day-to-day -day work of the frontline employees of any organization. It doesn't really matter what industry, but we're really looking at, uh, in, in this case and for this series and, and for this topic, I'm really focusing on those frontline leaders who are in the trenches day-to-day. -day. Some of them are working supervisors, right? Some of them, you know, because um, when they're, in addition to their supervisory skills and, and you know, managing the time uh, the time and the time off and the schedule and, and uh, checking in with the HR responsibilities, they're also out on the floor doing that same work right along Side their employees many times. Uh, sometimes they're the ones training their, their frontline workers, but it really is that, that first level of leadership right behind the frontline employees. That's who this, uh, this series is targeted for. And that's, man, they're, they, I've got a soft spot in my heart for those frontline workers right now, partly because so many of them um, had been in that front line and then poof, they're, they're now the leader. Now, would you say that these frontline leaders tend to be people that maybe maybe develop a skill, they get very good at what they're doing, and maybe they rise to the top of their peers. And then because of that, they are chosen to move up to the next level. 
Yeah, it totally depends, right? Because there are some that, that come in in that front line and, and the, the management of the organization or the senior leadership of the organization looks around and, and watches that guy or that gal and they they clearly get it. They get leadership and, and they're natural influencers and they're natural um, inspirers of people and, and the team follows them and gravitates to them. And those folks get promoted into leadership roles and they many of them have kind of some natural skills and talents or they've been they've modeled after others that they admired and, and they kind of do okay. But then there's that other group that I think you're alluding to that that um, are technically super great, uh, perhaps in software development. I do a lot of work in the financial services industry. And in software development, there are coders who are phenomenal coders. I mean, man, they write gorgeous code and they are top notch at that. Many times they are simply not equipped or not interested in doing. And, and that's fine to, um, to have conversations with them and see if they want to be promoted. But we certainly shouldn't be promoting them there without help and without support support without perhaps mentors or coaches or training or something to help them sort of shift that gear because man frontline uh, developing uh, developing and and writing code or uh, waiting tables is totally different than leading people who do those activities yeah and sometimes there's just this assumption that well hey they're great at doing these things they're great at managing these numbers or or managing these processes so uh, there's naturally they're going to be good at the next level, but that's not always true, is it? It's it's not always true, and I've seen it so many times, right? Whether it's in whether it's in software, whether it's in um, you know frontline work in in any industry, really. They people who are technical, technically capable, uh, capable, really really skilled in that space, they rise to the top, right? They're the cream of the crop. They're the best, and so someone will want to say, okay, well you're the best at this, so let's plunk you in this leadership role. And the worst stories of those that I've seen, the ones that just break my heart so much, are the ones that get plunked into that leadership role, and then perhaps maybe they're in that frontline kind of uh, kind of role where they have to do both things, right? They might be doing the, um, the some portion of their time was doing those day, day job that they used to do and some other portion of their time is leading. And what happens is the leadership part becomes so heavy for them, that mantle of leadership becomes so heavy, they don't know what to do with it. And either they drown under it and, and so they get buried and they get behind in their emails and they get behind in their requests and they're, they're not really great at assigning people to the right shifts or then their um, their technical thing that they used to be get at, capable at and even great at they get less and less and less time to do that because they're 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 drowning in the leadership work and they um, even that their skills start to erode sometimes or their confidence starts to erode because they they used to be you know untouchable in that space and now it's like they can't seem to do anything right and it can be really demoralizing and really frustrating for those employees who are now doing something that they didn't even sign up for really in many cases they just got promoted there and that's not that wasn't their career path. That wasn't what they wanted. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, I, I, when you're when you're talking about that, I think of I think of sports a little bit. You know, just because somebody's a superstar athlete at the top of their game doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be a great coach. You know, professional basketball and football and baseball are just riddled with examples of that, where you know, superstar becomes you know, uh, you know, front office. Uh, you know, general manager or, or, or the head coach or whatever, and, and they just don't do well for whatever reason. They're just not, the skills just don't always translate into that. But, and so there, there really is something to being a leader that requires uh, a different, a different skill set and, and a different mentality. And so what you're saying here too, and what I think we're going to talk about is how do we take those people when we put them in position, how do we support them? How do we give them the tools and help them make the adjustments the best way that they can in order to turn themselves into a great leader without just starting and assuming that they already are? Absolutely. Just because someone's great at one thing doesn't mean they're necessarily inherently great at something else. A couple things in particular to just start us off on this. Um, one of the first things that we've got to talk about for those people who have been promoted into a leadership, one of the first challenges that often comes up is, wait, now I'm a supervisor to those guys and I used to be peers with them. They used to be my buddies. They used to be my friends. How do I how do I navigate this weird relationship? Am I, am I their boss now? Am I in charge? Uh, d- does that mean we don't get to be friends anymore? Do we still get to go have, you know, beers on Saturdays or, or whatever it used to be? It, it shifts that relationship. And many of them simply don't know how to deal with that. They're like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Some of them uh, shut down. Some of them uh, over, uh, overcompensate in the top down sort of heavy handed approach, um, sometimes rifts form. And I think one of the first things we've got to do is really equip leaders 
leaders with uh, and, and the teams frankly, leaders and the teams, we've got to equip them with some tools for dealing with change. And then some, some relationship uh, conversations where we can help people understand the dynamics of the relationship now and talk about what our expectations are and, and share those and exchange those in a kind of mutually effective way. And that's a really great thing that um, if you have a, a supervisor, for example, a new supervisor that you've just promoted underneath you and, and they've got a team, this is something that you as a leader could now sit down with that supervisor and kind of talk through and, and set expectations for some of those things, maybe share some of your stories from when you went through it, um, and then bring the team together along with the supervisor and hold some group norms kinds of conversations, some working with me kinds of conversations, where the team and the individual really have that opportunity to, to, to lay out those expectations, to talk about the new way, and, and with your support as the leader over that group, uh, perhaps the, the next level leader, just giving them a little bit of courage, a little bit of encouragement even in that space. So you're saying that talking about this stuff and, and really creating what's to be expected is, is, is a big step with that. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I probably, yeah, uh, Joe, I, I'd love to love to hear your thoughts on this. I'll, I'll tee it up with this quote on um, that I've been using for years. Holding someone else accountable to expectations that they don't know about is tyrannical. That's so true. It really, is, right? it really is something about setting, setting it up. Yeah, I agree with that. We, uh, yeah, we, and we deal with this all the time in the restaurant industry too. And and it's so important that you know you don't just implement consequences when somebody doesn't do something right. You have to back up and you have to give the example of what is right. Make sure that there's understanding, right, and that you get the head nod and the and the and the eye contact, uh, and so that there's a, a clear understanding first. It's really you're right. It's tyrannical to catch somebody by surprise and, and give them a negative consequence to something that they didn't even really understand well. And, and even if they should have understood it well, but didn't. So yeah, no, that plays in really well into this. You know, you've got a person that's being promoted from, uh, from, from a, a, a place of maybe expertise to now a place of leadership. And, it, and the communication needs to go, go both ways, doesn't it? They need to understand what's expected of them going forward, but then they need the people that's working for them to understand too that there's some expectations going back and forth. And so there needs to be that relationship. I've been in this very situation with my brother at times, uh, like where uh, we're, we're organizing one of our trips or our snowmobile trips. And um, he, he'll get really frustrated with me about something. And I'll be like, you didn't articulate what, what the expectations were of this. You can't get that mad about it. Uh, but now that I know you can, and so I know exactly what you mean. And I, I've been, I, I, I can't think of an employee situation where I've been under that, but I've definitely been under that uh, in uh, these tips with my family. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> yeah, you bet. And, and we do it too sometimes, right? We'll get frustrated with someone else because for, for some reason they weren't able to read our mind or weren't able to, to, to guess what it was that we were thinking. Well, if we just talk about it, which is why foundationally that very first skill that I want to make sure anyone has if they're from being promoted into a leadership role, it's, it's a communication skill. They have to understand that, that communication really is critical, that it, they have to be willing to give it the work because communication is super hard. And then they have to be willing, especially in a leadership role, but I think we all need this, is to, to be willing to be aware of the truth that communication is not about me. It's not about what I want and what I want to say and what's most e easy for me or what's simplest for me or most convenient for me. It is always and forever about what the other person needs. What are they hearing? What are they saying? What are they saying with their bodies? What are they, what, what are they not saying, right? What are they listening to? Where are they in their moment? Then and only then, only after I put them first, can I have an effective conversation with them. Yeah, I see sometimes when people, leaders, will check off a box. You know, they'll, okay, well, I, I told them this. Maybe it's the, during an orientation process. They're just they're going through the different policies of the company, and they're just making, they're just checking off a box. And you're so right. It's not about what you have to say. It's about what they need to hear. And then that confirmation that they hear it and understand it, and that there's, there's, there's a freedom for them to ask questions for clarity as well. So, yeah, that's so important. Well, that's a big shift for a rock star, right? For someone who has is used to being a rock star and used to accelerating through very often when they're very highly skilled, they tend to learn things pretty quickly, or at least in that discipline. 
and so they don't tend to have a lot of questions. They tend to master things pretty well, and they tend to just know things. And so then when they're um, when they're learning to convey those ideas to others, they need to sort of adjust that pace that that other person may not learn at the same speed, may not be interested in the same topics, may not have the same level of mastery that they have. And so they have to try a different, uh, different communication approach, a different way of getting that message across, a different way of connecting with that person. And sometimes that's really, really hard for someone who's um, who's been a star. If, they, if they're used to being the center of, the, of attention, then sometimes shifting that mindset to, to be that servant leader, to be the one second or behind and putting others first, sometimes that takes some growth. Right. You know, Seneca, so there's something that I've been teaching in, in my company for many years, and I know you teach it with your Clear Next Step as well. And th this ties into exactly what you're talking about here. It's learning how to communicate according to their skills and how, what their language is. And that's a, that's a hard thing, but, and everybody truly is different, but it's so easy to have the temptation just to, uh, you know, look at everybody as a nail when you're a hammer, you know, and just kind of do the same thing for everybody. So, you and, bet. and so when you do promote a leader, when you're bringing a leader um, with, let, let's say you're the CEO and you're bringing somebody from a technical position, position into a leadership position in your organization, what are what are some of the things that you would recommend that you would do or what, what would be like the plan that you would lay out in developing them into that instead of just throwing them in the deep end what 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 would your expectations be of uh that process oh joe i love that you asked because i if, if you have the time and you have the ability i think the the process should be pretty robust and it should include and begin with asking the individual if that's something they even want I think we, we should ask that technical person if they want to be promoted to a leadership, if, if that's interesting to them. And if they say something like, well, no, gosh, why not? I mean, why would I do that? Yuck, no, thank you. Um, we should honor that and we should respect that or at least give them an opportunity to learn in a different way without forcing the issue. And if they say something like, well, gosh, I'm not sure, what would that look like? setting them up with uh, shadowing opportunities and a mentor and you know someone else that they can work with that they can that really does model that effective leadership and that can talk to them about and and show them some of those leadership skills that they'll have to grow so um, I think it begins with inquiry and I be, think it begins with asking the individual if that's something they're even interested in and so opening their eyes to that and, and bringing them along I think once you have interest and you've got people moving in that direction, uh, mentoring programs and coaching programs are absolutely critical. Having places where within the organization, a peer can help them along. And then the, the joy of working with a coach, uh, someone outside, someone unbiased, someone impartial, someone who's not going to necessarily um, tell all your, your weaknesses to uh, everybody around, right? So sometimes people feel um, uncomfortable with an internal mentor or talking to HR, but an external coach can really create that sense of confidence and uh, that openness that and that authenticity that people have uh, that they need to grow. So a uh, coaching opportunity is great. And I think there are also skills that can be taught. So I, I do believe that there are some leadership concepts that can be shared and taught in a, in a paradigm shifting conversations, which is why I've designed, uh, it was several years ago that I designed this series that's for uh, frontline leaders. And it gives them some of those, those basic skills, uh, the foundations of communication, uh, things like how do you deal with change or help other people through change, um, specific tools for preparing for messages that are really, really important. And how do you make sure you deliver a message that works? Um, it's some emotional intelligence concepts and getting people successful about interacting with other humans, uh, conflict management, navigating through those moments when we're not primed to be our best and giving and re receiving feedback, which by the way, as an American society is certainly not natural to us here in Iowa, we might be Iowa nice, but, um, and maybe we'll share some nice things, but, but authentically giving and then receiving feedback, super tough. So I think in a classroom style setting, you, you can train on these, you, you can give people concepts and ideas that then they can follow up on and do activities and practice on and and continue to to reinforce in a with in a coaching situation or um you know it's skill practice on their own but I, I do think there are some paradigm shifting things that that we need to at least open their eyes to and i think it would be great in any organization if you're thinking about promoting someone technical into a leadership role give them give them the skills that they need to succeed well seneca tell our listeners how they can get a hold of you how they can find out more about uh, what services you offer you bet. Thanks, Joel. So my name is Seneca Wa, and I'm with Your Clear Next Step. It's not my step, it's your step. You got to get clarity before action. We help you figure out what's very next, and then we help you take that step. So Your Clear Next Step 
we're at yourclearnextstep.com. Uh, if you visit our website, you can see that you can go into either uh, training, coaching, or events. Um, you can also, right there from the homepage at yourclearnextstep.com, you can see whether you're looking for help as an individual or whether you're trying to help your organization or whether you're part of a church that's trying to help your church. And our commitment is to helping people have better work days so that together we can co-create better communities. If we all have just a better work day, then we're all gonna drive home a little safer. We're gonna tip the pizza guy a little more generously and we're gonna have better weekends where we volunteer and contribute. So that's the best way to reach out at yourclearnextstep.com. And if you're interested in this idea of the, the supervisory skills, if you will, those, those frontline leadership skills, we do have a six part series that's coming out here in February. And um, it, each module will include a module and then the option to get supplemental coaching along with that. And the modules are spaced a couple weeks apart and uh, they're 10, uh, 10 to 12. So just a couple of hours and we won't use the whole time. You'll have a chance to, to meet with a cohort of others who are taking those supervisory skills. And we'll, we'll talk about a, a communication. We'll talk about moving at the speed of change. We'll talk about a, a very specific tool to help make sure your message gets through. Um, we'll talk about that emotional intelligence and interacting successfully with other humans. Um, we'll talk about conflict management and navigating through those tough moments when one of us is primed, uh, it's not primed to be our best. And then we'll talk about giving and receiving the gift of feedback. So six different modules and they're designed, uh, you spend a couple of hours on each of them and then there's the option for supplemental coaching as well. So I recommend if you're, if you're looking for that for yourself as a leader, you want to grow or you've got a, a rising star who's you're thinking about promoting or someone that you've recently promoted or someone that you promoted, you know, back in 2008 that still needs help. Um, by all means, these are skills designed to really help them be even more effective in those frontline leadership roles. Excellent. And Seneca, I have one last question for you. So over the years, so what is the one superpower that you've either uh, naturally was born with or have developed or learned over the years that has helped you in your business more than anything else? Oh, Joel, what a great question. Oh, my goodness. So mine I inherited from my father, and it is it is an optimism. But very specifically, it is the ability to see greatness in everyone. And I am so grateful for that. And I don't think I would be a trainer. I don't think I would be a leader of a professional development organization or a coach or, um, and I might struggle as a mom in, in some cases. And as a mom, I, you know, watching my kids interact with other teenagers, uh, if I didn't have the ability to look at other humans and see greatness. And I am so grateful for that. Wow. That is, I, I would agree with that. That is a definite superpower that you have, Seneca. And it, uh, it resonates all the way through your company with your your coaches, and I'm sure your clients as well. So, hey, we thank you so much for being on the podcast with, with us. This is terrific. I'm excited for uh, the feedback on the show. Um, um, I think there's a lot of people out there that could use Seneca, and, and she definitely is a professional sidekick. So I love yeah, that as well. No doubt, for sure. So, all right. Hey, we invite all of you out there to uh, join us on our Facebook page at Superhero Sidekick or look up uh, SuperheroSidekick.com. Join us on our webpage as well. And uh, we'd, we'd love to hear from you. Well, thank you very much. Thank Have you. a great day, everybody. And see ya.